Hey, what's up? Justin here, and welcome to 65 Drums. Today I'm doing a walk around of my 2019 drum setup. The point of this video isn't to say I have the perfect setup or anything, just to show you how my mind works and maybe you can get inspiration if you wanna change up your set. One thing to mention before I do the walk around is that this is very much a reviewer's kit, so everything changes all the time and I even add stuff just because I have to review it, not because I necessarily like it. Some stuff I really love and other stuff I just keep adding and taking away because you know, to do a review channel, you gotta always be experimenting. So these are Drum Tech Design Series mesh heads, 14, 12, 13, and 16. And this is also 16, 22 inch kick drum. Now, as far as the triggers go, this is an R drums bar trigger. People ask me whether or not it has positional sensing. I don't know what the website says, but I haven't gotten it working myself with a drum module. So maybe it works and I just don't know how to work the settings good enough to enable it, but I haven't gotten positional sensing to work. This is by far my favorite trigger on the entire kit. Then we got Joe Becky's side mounted here and here. And then this is the UFO drums trigger right here. And then of course this one has the trigger built into it because it's an actual electronic kick drum pad. This right here is a Roland KD-822 conversion kick drum package. $300, best $300 I've spent on the kit in a very long time. I really, really enjoy using it. It feels more accurate than having a regular you know two ply mesh head on your kick drum even if you put a blanket behind it and also the last kick drum sugar i used to use it wasn't quite accurate enough for me this is an atv 14 inch hi-hat i really like these hi-hats right here because they're full 14 inches across it does make a big difference like how you position the different symbols and drums and stuff my only thing that i don't like about it is the fact that you have to plug it in i'm plugging into a power strip way over there so this is going down and this is also being plugged in. So they're both plugging into this tri-tap right here. And then an extension cord is going from that to the actual power strip. People have been really asking me about this Jobeki low volume symbol right here. And I'm enjoying it. Uh, I haven't done the review yet because Jobeki called me and said they were gonna send me a full set of like different low volume and actually just regular metal symbols that they have. And that was like a month and a half, maybe two months ago. So I've just been waiting for that to arrive. You never know when a company is gonna be able to send you stuff because they have to fulfill actual orders from paying customers first every single time. And that's just because it's a business. So I might review this one first and then maybe wait until they send me the rest of the symbols. This is a Roland CY15R, CY13R. So those are both ride symbols, but obviously there's no way I'm using this as a ride symbol, it's too small for that. This even, this 15 inch symbol, it's fine on a Roland TD30K, but it's not quite big enough for this setup. So eventually I'm gonna be upgrading to a 18 inch ride symbol. And we're actually gonna talk about that in the future upgrade section of this video. So this is a Goedrum kick drum. Goedrum has sent me two drum sets, a KE6 and a JE6. And for the life of me, I can never remember which piece goes to which drum set. It's sitting on a drum rack. I've removed a bunch of different parts and pieces from it. You can actually see I've really I've really scuffed this up. This is actually the same drum rack I used in that drumming everywhere video, the one where I was running around outside in a boat lock and on my roof and stuff. Uh, I didn't use this on my roof. If you watch the behind the scenes video, uh, you know that it's because only four post drum racks work very well on a roof of a house. Maybe the technical definition because of the way I'm using it is a gong drum. So I just have a second kick drum sound on this. And so I can hit this and the floor toms or the snare, it just makes a really, really cool, uh, you know, textured sound. So back when Goedrum made this kick drum, they used to make their triggers like this. They actually bent back as you played long enough and hard enough. So your trigger signal would get weaker and weaker the more you played. Now, I don't know how they make them now. I actually made a video talking about the issue and Goedrum saw it and they said they were gonna fix it in the factory. Point of the story is that I can't actually use this as a kick drum anymore, but it's fine as like a, uh, a mounted uh, gong drum. So it's really, really fun. You should try it out sometime if you have a spare kick drum lying around. It makes you play differently, actually. As far as cabling goes, I'm using two different kinds. I'm using a drum tech cable and then some cheap ones that I found on Amazon. I can't remember, what are these called? Uh, learning all this on camera. Hosa, these are Hosa cables. So these are all like, I think they were like 12 bucks, 10 bucks per cable. And they work well for a while, but if you're like me reviewing stuff, you're gonna be continually plugging stuff in and unplugging it. And they don't work for like really professional use. But if you're not using your drum set for anything incredibly serious, they do work fine. Really cheap cables that are great because they're the right length for an electronic drum set like this. And they're also angled on one end, so they fit well with cymbals and straight on the end that goes to the drum module. And then of course I got the drum tech cables, the ones that are clear. They came in a bundle, but I've 
I think I've just gotten rid of the zip ties that were holding them all together. Now, interesting story about the drum tech cables. I love the way they look. They're really professional, well-made, high-end, but for some reason, when I use them with my CY15R, um, they weren't transmitting the signal for all three zones. There was something funny going on with the cables or the triggering or whatever, where I was only getting two zones from my ride symbol. And then I would switch over to the Hosa cables. They look exactly the same, they're all stereo cables. The Hosa cables will give me all three zones of my roll and ride symbol, but the drum tech cables did not. So I'm guessing I just got a couple of bad drum tech cables, but I don't really know for sure. This is my DW uh, ride stand, and then I've got this little adapter so I can have a second cymbal arm right there. And then over here, this one is from Tama. This one's from Tama. I've got a snare stand holding my, my second rack tom, so now it's a floor tom. And that is from Gibraltar. I just bought that from Amazon for like 60 bucks. Got some sort of stand right here holding up my drum module. And man, what, what did that go to? I can't even remember. Now as far as my hi-hat stand, I'm really loving this because it's from PDP and it's only got two legs. That's really perfect because it doesn't get in the way of your kick drum pedal. And also the bottom of this has Velcro on it, so this darn thing never ever moves. And I don't have to use any like anti-skid stuff. I've got different, where'd I put it? Yeah, here we go. These are from a company called uh, K-Brakes. And you put this underneath of your hi-hat stand or your snare stand under each of the feet and they make it so it doesn't move anywhere because it got these teeth right here. But when your hi-hat stand has Velcro on the bottom, you don't even need these darn things. I've also got these like little gel pads that didn't work quite as well as the K-Brakes. These two toms right here, they've got blankets inside of them. And I've actually tested everything in a video. I can't remember the name of the video, but I tested how loud it was if you didn't have anything inside of them, and then how loud it was if you did have stuff inside of them, and how loud it was if you just left the bottom head off completely. And I've noticed that the quietest combination was having a bottom acoustic head and then blankets inside. Okay, so this next part of the video is about future potential upgrades. So I'm thinking about upgrading the drum module to something else. It might even be a downgrade, I really don't know. The whole point of this drum set is that I'm having fun using it, but I'm also always buying stuff or changing stuff out so I can make videos about it. And I've used this TD-34 for a very long time. I've gotten like, I don't even know, like 10, 15 videos just out of this drum module. The first 100 to 1,000 subscribers were just people that were watching tutorials on how to use this darn thing because it's just so complicated. But I'm thinking about changing this thing out and using some other drum module, whether or not that's a, I don't know, a Strike, a TD-17, a two box module, a Mimic, I don't know. I'm thinking about upgrading this in 2019. We'll see what happens. So one last thing to mention about the drum module is that because I'm using in-ears for the videos, I need an extender cable, quarter inch all the way to eighth inch. It's way too long, as you can see right there on the floor, but it reaches my chair, and that's the only important thing, and then I'm using West Tone in-ears. I'm going to be changing out this ride cymbal. As you guys have all mentioned, uh, it's kind of ridiculous how I have this humongous crash cymbal right here. This isn't mine though, by the way. Someone who watches 65 Drums sent this to me for like two months to try it out and make a review. I have to mail this back to the guy. This is going to be upgraded. I'm gonna be making an 18 inch ride cymbal, and I just bought a drum trigger in order to do that. So this is my newest drum trigger that I just bought. This is from Stealth Drums. I'm not prepared to make a review on it yet because I actually have to buy a low volume cymbal to pair with this. But this gives me three zones, bell, bow, and edge. And also it lets me do a choke strip if I wire this all up correctly. Don't worry, I've already filmed an unboxing video and I'll be including that with a review later on. But I've got the trigger. Now all I gotta do is buy like a Zildjian L80 or maybe something cheaper from some knockoff brand. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching. Really do appreciate it. And I'm looking forward to doing some cool stuff next year in 2019. Have an awesome day and I'll see you in a few. Okay, so now that you know the gear that I use to make the videos, let's talk about how I use that gear and my process behind reviewing a product. This right here is my backup safety camera. So if I wanna have a secondary view of the drum set, I recommend getting one with a motor if you're a drummer because it makes for very nice looking drum covers and even product shots. Instead of having to go dig around through all kinds of folders to find the, the same 10 things, I just have a template so it's all done for me and then I can just drop in the content and edit it from there.